God has a great plan for your life and he wants you to get your hopes up and he wants you to dream big. There's going to be situations that come about that hurt you, that bother you, that try to hinder you and keep you back from your destiny, but it's still worth it. It's still worth going in there and getting in the water. I am so glad I got into the water. I'm so glad I swam with those sharks. walk in love. He's called us to be a light, to be an example, to be kind. But we've got to take courage because there's sharks out there. I just went to see the Cinderella movie and it was already in my message. But in the movie, she said, her mother told her to take courage or be courageous and to be kind. And it's true. It's true. You're going to have to be courageous if you're gonna go out and swim with sharks. You're gonna have to be courageous if you're gonna be the woman that God's called you to be. If you're gonna be the man that God's called you to be. If you've been called to do something, and we all have, because we all have a savior who died for us and says we're worthy, we're valuable, we're acceptable, and that we're unique and we're created for something special. A lady asked me earlier, she was trying to, I'm so afraid I'm not gonna do what God wants me to do. How do I know what God wants me to do? I said, first of all, God just wants you to be. He wants you to be his daughter. He just wants you to spend time with him to pray, which is just talking to him, to get in his word and get to know him. Be concerned about building a relationship with him first and being obedient to him. Just ask him what he wants and he'll show you. You don't have to go and perform religious works for God because Jesus already did that. He already paid the price. He already sacrificed his life. So we don't need to look at our mistakes and look at ourselves and become so insecure and self-focused. We need to be focused on Jesus and what he's done, what he's already finished. And if you can look at Jesus and say, I'm righteous because of what he did, I'm valuable because of what he did, and because of that, I can hold my head up high. My identity is in Christ. I don't have to be moved by any sharks. I don't have to be uh, taken in, and I don't have to be eaten up. (laughs) I can be who God created me to be. But in the early days of the church, there was one situation. This was 20 years ago, and I don't have any odd against anybody. I forgave a long time ago, but I want to give you a picture of what this looks like. There was a woman who came to the church, and she had in her mind that she wanted to lead the women in the church. And I perp- honestly, I was too intimidated, and I really didn't want it. And so I was trying to get out of doing it, and she wanted to take over and do it. And she consistently told me how I couldn't do it. And she consistently bulldozed and bullied, and anything I tried to do, my efforts were minimal, but when I tried, they were met with criticism. My husband's efforts were met with criticism. She criticized a lot of things that we did. She would always be working something, always working some scheme or something. And Instead of complimenting the church, like we're all called to do, she was trying to compete with the church. And I didn't understand our role of authority. If someone doesn't, if you don't take the authority that God's given you over whatever territory he's given you, whether it be your husband, whether it be, I'm not saying rule over your husband, I'm saying that relationship with your husband, if you don't protect that relationship, someone will move in on it. If you don't protect the relationship with authority God's given you over your children, someone will move in on it and try to take it. If you don't take whatever God has given you, whether it's, be, whether it's your employment, management, if you don't and you're intimidated by people, they will take your position and take your authority from you and they will use it against you. So a shark will intimidate you and make you feel like you can't. And the reason they do that is because they want what you have. They're jealous of what you're trying to be instead of realizing who they are. Some of them are malicious. Some of them just haven't discovered their identity. You gotta navigate through some tricky waters with people. I've loved women and loved people and invested in them and I've seen them change. And I've also loved people and seen them bite me and bite me and get me over and over and over again. I'd rather err though on the side of following God and being obedient to him than I would on the side of becoming a shark because I got bit. You need to be careful of that as well. But she would manipulate things. She would criticize and she would gossip about us. And she had plenty of time to do it. 
I was busy trying to help my husband with this new church. I was keeping the office. I was doing the books. I was reading the phone. I was answering the phone. I was doing all these things, trying to manage stuff, setting up chairs on the weekend, hanging up banners, doing all these things to help my husband. I didn't have time to go make house calls and everybody and tell them everything that was wrong in the church. I didn't have time to have everybody over and do all these things and appease their you know, flesh and build them up and compliment them because I was busy trying to really truly serve and be a pastor's wife and be a leader. The harder I worked, the more she criticized. One time I got invited to go speak at a women's conference and WCVO Radio asked me to be the keynote speaker. She came up to me in the hall and this, this had been going on for years and my husband, I did not stand up to her. Can I just say we were weak? I was weak. I was intimidated. Have you ever been weak? Have you ever been intimidated by a shark? Have you ever frozen? Have you ever found yourself doing something that you knew was not in your best interest or your husband's best interest or your children's best interest or your friend's best interest or your church's best interest or your future, your destiny, your calling because you were intimidated by someone? Am I the only one that was weak? I was so weak and I wouldn't stand up to her. And my husband was trying to navigate through this as well. It's hard because in the early days of anything, you think you have to put up with everything. My hairdresser was telling me the same thing. She said, you know, I've only had a few clients I've had to let go through the years. She said, but it's so hard to confront those things. None of us wants to confront something, right? We just rather sometimes just be the sucker fish. But I don't want that for you. I don't want that for you because I know, especially some of you are younger, you're young moms, some of you are my age, and you know what I'm talking about. We've been through this stuff. I look at my destiny and I look what God called me to do. In college, he gave me a dream about helping women and I ran from it. And I really ran from it when I got involved with the church world because I didn't think they wanted me to do it. So I got involved with youth, started working with youth, and I found out, you know, there's situations no matter where you are. You can hide, you can run, you can do this, you can do that, but Whatever you do, you're going to have to confront the intimidation, the insecurity, the fear inside of you if you're ever going to swim with sharks, if you're ever going to rise to what God has for you, if you're ever going to not just hope, but see the hopes you have come to pass. It's going to take confrontation, conflict. I hate to tell you that, but unless you confront it, you're not going to ever rise above it. You're not gonna ever break through it if you let it bother you. If you let familiar spirits speak to you, things from your past, insecurity. You know what, it really was not her fault. It was my responsibility. I was the one that should have confronted it, but I was too weak. I was too inexperienced. And I thought maybe something was wrong with me. And I kept examining my motives and examining my heart over and over and over again. And God kept trying to help me see the authority that he'd given me. Finally, I mean, it got down to where she would call before I did this women's meeting. She'd call and say, I don't have a babysitter, so Gary can babysit for my kids tonight. My husband, yeah. And so what did I do? Instead of standing up, I called my husband and said, you're babysitting tonight. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, boy. I set my family in situations I should have never let them be in. Sometimes I didn't protect my kids the way I wish I would have. Because I thought, you know, because of the church, I should or shouldn't. I I did pretty good in that area, but not always. We gave her a position in the church then. Because we thought if we give her a position, then she'll be happy, right? She's looking for approval. She's looking for identity. She wants something to do. That didn't make anything any better. It made it absolutely worse because now she had authority. Now she had some authority to throw around. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And we put up with this for years and years and finally... Something happened that was huge and my husband had to sit down and I had to sit down with her and we shared how much we loved her. We shared all the things that we felt for her and all we felt God wanted for her and then we shared with her what she could not do anymore. Do you know she quit coming to church? And I thought, what have I been protecting all these years? All these years. Now God later reconciled it. Later she came to me and she said, it's my time to step out in ministry. Would you pray for me and bless me? And I have to tell you, There was no repentance, but I have to tell you, God had reconciled it in my heart because you know what my first reaction was? I reached right out, laid my hands on her, and I prayed a true blessing over her, and that was really what was in my heart. I couldn't have said that years before because I always felt like she was holding me back. So I, though, had to stand up and make a decision. I was weak, but I had to make the decision. I was gonna be strong in the Lord. Do you want to end the war on sadness? Then click the button right there and subscribe.